Today, let's get this Amiga 4000 up and running. It is so close, I can taste it. Last time we recapped the main board and the processor board, and when we left off, the main board was taking a bath in the ultrasonic cleaner. So you can see that after its bath, the main board is looking nice and shiny and clean. It was a really short trip through the ultrasonic cleaner, only about six minutes per side. So now we need to recap the daughter board, and then we'll take a look at the power supply in the floppy. So the last caps are in the daughter board, Rev B, and there are five axial caps. And axial caps are nice because they're easy to replace or I should say easy to remove. Uh, to get an axial cap out, it's simply a matter of re cutting the exposed leads so that you can replace the cap. Um, you can just pull them through. So it's like looking at this cap here, we'll get in here, we'll cut it close to the cap so we have as much lead to hold on to as possible. Of course, gotta get my snippers in there. And then the other side. The cap's out. The leads can be lifted up. Just a pair of... And then what I like to do, since you're working on both sides, which can be a pain, I like to just put a pair of uh, hemostats. Get a good grip on that lead, which requires you to be able to see them. Just put a moderate amount of pressure. That is a big ground plane there. So I am going to add a little flux. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of solder to the iron just to aid in heat transfer. And out it comes. And uh, it's probably the, uh, the little bit of solder on the iron that did the trick there, less so than the flux. I don't want to lift that pad and indeed on the other side that part is in a humongous ground plane so I need to get three the heat through to this side of the board that's the trick and the ground plane is sucking the heat out of the lead so I've turned off the soldering iron I'll be back in a minute um, I'm gonna change tips once it's cooled down and I'm going to change to a soldering iron tip with a great deal more thermal mass than what I've been using. Soldering iron's heating up with the new tip on it. I thought it was interesting that these are Foxconn company now famous for making a lot of Apple products. So, and if you can see, it's kind of hard to tell, but this board is really dirty. So, um, once I get the caps off, I'm gonna give it a really short run in the ultrasonic cleaner. And uh, since these hemostats can also act as a heat sink, I've got them as far up on the lead as I can get away from the, uh, the point where it's soldered to the board. Nope, yep. that's removed. I will repeat that process on all these other caps and then I will uh, run this through the cleaner and I will be back for the installation. Floppy drive time. And this is an interesting floppy. The real HD drive, A357, for use in an Amiga computer only. 880KB or 1.76 megabyte hard drive, made by Amtrade. And I am going to void my warranty. Has this interesting little board on the back, so clearly a PC drive modded to work in an Amiga, and that just pops right off. Remove the front faceplate. Okay, first look at the inside of this drive. Clearly a little bit dusty. As you know, it's never been into before, so I'm just gonna clean this up and see how we do. So I'm going to start off with just a dry swab and clean some of this goop off. 
this lubricant is not at all sticky. So clearly somebody used something that wasn't complete and utter garbage at the factory. That is surprising. Lots of goobers. Anybody hungry? Mmm, good stuff. So now, start using some alcohol. Getting so close, this is the last sub-assembly. And then I can put this whole thing together. I can't wait to see how it works. I am dying. I expect to be using this Amiga as my, my main retro daily driver for at least a year, if not more. I, my old friend Rick's Amiga 3000 is the one I really want to get working. But this should uh, do quite nicely for a while. And uh, don't feel bad for the Amiga 2500 over here, because it's going to go to my buddy Tom. I met him in the Amiga user group back in 1988, summer of 88. Um, he was active as an officer in the club the same time I was, very active in supporting people, um, writing articles for our newsletter, all kinds of good stuff. So I am all the more uh, motivated to get this working just so that I can get Tom hooked up in an Amiga. Stuff's fun, but it's always funner with friends, right? Now I'm going to clean all of the surfaces just to get as much dust out of here as I can. Um, this is really just due to a technical issue called I don't like grodies. I want it looking nice and pretty. Um, that's just kind of my thing. The dust will not hurt it where it's at, but I'll know it's there. And there is a fair amount of it in there. You can really tell this is a later floppy drive. The uh, quality seems quite high. So, not just the quality, the, the simplicity of it. It's a very simple drive. Cleaning the rails that the head's right on, or the rail as the case may be. The other rail is actually the uh, cam for the motor. So, get that nice and clean. This whole drive just is really free and moving nicely. And now I'm carefully cleaning the print heads. <laughs> the print heads. I can tell I was a printer guy. Carefully cleaning the read-write heads. After that Amiga 1000, working on this is somewhat refreshing. All right, so now I need a little bit of tri-flow grease. As I've said before, it's my preference, but any kind of a white lithium would be just fine. If you really want it, you can get Triflow grease just about Amazon or pretty much anywhere does this kind of stuff. Put a little bit on here, maybe a little bit more since they had quite a bit on there. Manufacturer knows, right? And it looks to me like the rise and drop mechanism is not lubricated. Now lightly, so I will clean that up and put just a tiny bit of grease on there. I'm planning another floppy drive restoration soon, real soon, for the same computer. So I'll do a little bit more detailed one on that one. All right, that works quite nicely. All that's left to do is clean up the very dirty front bezel. And real careful not to break those. If you're wondering why it takes me so long just to put a bezel on. There's a video on Chris Edwards's channel, which I will link in the description. And that will show you how to convert a PC drive without an adapter, uh, adapter board. It's not a terribly complicated process. You just gotta cut in a couple of traces and uh, cross a couple of wires so that uh, the signals are going to the right pins.
So I pulled apart the power supply to take a look at how it looks on the inside bits. Um, I have to narrate this because my uh, batteries died in the audio recorder while I was recording this and the audio on the phone was horrible. So I pulled it apart and pulled out the board to take a look at it. The fan was soldered to the board, so I had to desolder the fan leads. Unfortunately, I could not find a connector to put on there, so I'm going to end up soldering it back on when I'm done. The board looks pretty good, but my god, there's so much flux from the factory, it's actually sticky. The fan works really well. It turns smoothly, it's quiet, so I am gonna go ahead and reuse it. One thing I found is that some of the screws were really rusty, so I put them in a little bit of a vapor rust to soak while I worked on this. After cleaning, the board looks great. I just gave it a good cleaning with alcohol. I had intended to recap it, but I discovered that I have almost none of these caps on hand. So the caps are on order. After a soak and evapor rust and a little bit of scrubbing, the screws look a lot better. They're not perfect, but I'd rather keep the original than replace them. After a good cleaning and inspection, it's time to put it all back together and let's see how this machine works. Brody covers need to be cleaned up. So we'll start with the top one here, which is you can see quite nasty. Start with a clean cloth and some Windex. And I cleaned all the little tiny sundry bits off camera. I didn't think you needed to see cleaning things like the, uh, the floppy bracket or the power switch. I want this nice and pretty though. I'm gonna be looking at it for at least probably a year, if not more. And uh, so I want it I want it looking gorgeous. Don't want to do like my granddad. He got back in the 80s a Jaguar E-type car that he just loved. And he polished and shined and until he polished his way all the way through the paint, leaving a very shiny piece of bare metal in the middle of the hood. So then the whole car had to be repainted. That should do it for the top cover. Boy, that cleaned up nice. And last, but not least, the front cover, which is just pretty gross. So let's clean this puppy up, starting on the inside, and then uh, put it all back together and see if it works. All right, I'm gonna give this a little more attention off camera, but I think it's looking quite lovely. Moment of truth, let's see how she does. Oh, no explosion, so apparently all the caps are on right. Yeah, I love the look of that toaster screen. And this mouse I will work on. In the meantime, shift left Amiga up arrow to go up, because the mouse won't go up. And just left me go up arrow to go up just one pixel at a time. We seem to have a working machine, all right. I can't wait to get this on my bench as a permanent resident. So I'm gonna call that a stopping point on this video. This thing has taken way too long already. I have close to 300 gigs of footage working on this thing. And we have a, a good working machine. 16 megs of fast RAM, two megs of chip RAM, 
There is an issue with the floppy drive, but I have a solution for that. In the next video, what I'm gonna do is I am going to see if I can get this floppy drive up and working. Uh, this drive does not work at all, but it is the correct drive for the machine instead of the PC drive. I'll also check and see. I suspect that the cable's backwards on that drive. I suspect it should work just fine. So in the next video, we'll install this compact flash to IDE. It's a nice little four gig card. Goes directly in in place of a hard drive. Uh, came in a really cool Amiga box. Uh, came from Amiga kit. And this is pre-set up for the 4000. I have no idea what's on it. So we'll hook it up and we'll get a software install for daily use setup on it. So I'll select some software, install it, set up the drive the way I want it. And then this mouse, which, you know, won't go up a little bit and the keyboard will get restored. So I hope you like this video. Check out this one where I received these machines. And here's another video you might like.